Well, apparently Kamala Harris has a black man voter problem. Um, this has now been called to attention by Obama. She's now put out some policies that she thinks is going to get her that black man vote. And the policies are quite eyebrow raising. But let me first play this video for you. This is from CNN. And they go through how the black voters for Democratic candidates, starting with Obama, then Clinton, then Biden, and now Harris, has dwindled over time. Watch this. And sometimes there's a trend line that I never noticed before and make me go, whoa, this is one of them, all right? This is the Democratic margin among black men under the age of 45 in presidential elections. You go back to November of 2012, what do you see? You see Obama by 81. Clinton only won him by 63. Then we're all the way down to Biden last time around yeah. by 53. A tremendous drop already. And then you take a look at the average of the most recent polls and Kamala Harris is up by only 41 points. That is about half the margin that Obama won them by back in November of 2012. And this I think is, you know, when Barack Obama goes in last week when he was in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, essentially talking to young black men, he made it seem like it was a Kamala Harris specific problem. Uh-uh, this is part of a long-standing yeah. trend of young black men moving away from the Democratic Party and Kamala Harris is just the latest to face that magnitude of black, younger black men going towards the Republican. That was, was what yeah. Okay, so Barack Obama did blame it on Kamala. Actually, he blames it on black men, saying, you just don't want to vote for a woman, is what he essentially says. Um, watch this video of Barack. We have not yet seen the same kinds of energy and turnout in all quarters of our neighborhoods and communities as we saw when I was running. Now, I also want to say that that seems to be more pronounced with the brothers. So if you don't mind, just for a second, I'm going to speak to y'all directly and say that when you have a choice that is this clean, <clears throat> when on the one hand you have somebody who grew up like you, knows you, went to college with you, understands the struggles and pain and joy that comes from those experiences. You said to work harder and do more and overcome and achieves the second highest office in the land. Okay. He says, when you have somebody, you know, this, the choice is clear, essentially, is what he's saying. You have somebody who grew up like you. She is like, <laughs> did she? He says, she she's grew up like you. She experienced things like you. She's just like you. Uh, these black voters are like, but not really. I mean, her dad, who's black, and her mom is Indian. The dad wasn't around in her life. She's raised by her Indian mother. She has much more in common with Indian culture than black culture. She's been made fun of going into record stores, buying black albums, you know, trying to put on an accent, like as if she's knows black people or from air. I mean, just ridiculous. She's not anything like, I mean, it's like Barack Obama who doesn't really have that, you know, he's not, I mean, people made fun of him too, as far as like, ah, you're not really one of us necessarily. You grew up with your white mom in Hawaii. Where was your dad? Same sort of thing. You didn't even know who your, where your dad was or saw your dad very much. You didn't really have the culture. You didn't grow up in our neighborhoods. I mean, it's just to, to, to plead to them using that, uh, that's not going to work. And maybe, and what CNN pointed out is, look, this is a trend. This just isn't the brothers not wanting to vote for a black woman or a woman in general, which is what Barack Obama, what, that's what he said at one point in this speech was, you don't want to vote for a woman. And, and I kind of have a feeling that maybe you just don't want to vote for a woman. No, this has been a trend that's gone on. Yes, a lot of people were invigorated under Obama and it wasn't because he was black. A lot of people voted for Obama. No matter their color, he was what people thought was inspiring, bringing forward something different, change, hope. That's what Obama represented. And then he got into office and disappointed everybody, right? And then now he's like a billionaire living in Martha's, Martha's Vineyard and, and uh, running around with, with other billionaires around the world. But Kamala not getting the... So it's, it doesn't have to do with her being a woman. It has to do with the fact that the Democratic Party is losing 
voters. They don't offer anything to people except a bunch of handouts. But here's Kamala Harris. <laughs> and she's got a plan. Don't you worry. She's got a plan. And her plan is, in order to get those black male voters, this isn't racist at all, by the way. <laughs> she's going to legalize drugs. That's what she's going to do. <laughs> this is her ridiculous plan. Her ridiculous plan is, I'm going to get the black male vote by legalizing weed because that's what they care about. I mean, could you get more bigoted, honestly, and say, well, this is what really matters to you, right? Legalizing weed, that's what's gonna get it. Okay, so this is what she says in her Harris Walls policy. She starts off by saying, black men deserve a president who cares about making their lives better. Harris Walls policy, Kamala Harris will create an opportunity agenda for black men. Here's the opportunity agenda. First of all, we're gonna give you a lot of money. So handouts here, but we're going to, well, you know, I mean, alone, I, I think it's good to support entrepreneurs. They should be doing this for everybody. But she says, provide 1 million loans that are fully forgivable. So this is free money up to $20,000 for black entrepreneurs and others to start a business. Who are the and others, by the way? <laughs> so is this just, is this, is this going to be 1 million loans, $20,000? Is this for everybody? I'm a little confused. Is this for everybody? But she's just saying, but since black men are included in the everybody category, she can frame it like, we're gonna give these loans to black entrepreneurs and others, meaning it's for everybody. Or is this just for black entrepreneurs? And I don't know what the others, who the others are. Is that also for, I mean, I, I'm so confused. And how do you qualify as black? What's gonna be the criteria there? What about if you're a drop black? What if you're from Nigeria? You're black. Does that count? You're an immigrant from Nigeria, but you're not a descendant of slavery. What if you're, yeah, how are they going to, what if you're a descendant of slaves, but you're not quite black anymore? Now you've had so many white parents that now you're blonde and blue eyed, but you still are a descendant of slaves. How, this is like reparations. How are you going to decide who gets what and who doesn't? Are you going to interview each person and say, yeah, you're black. I guess we'll give you the 20 grand. How are you going to determine this? So then she says, support education, training, and mentorship programs that lead to good paying jobs for black men, including pathways to become teachers. I mean, that's, I, I'm, is that a difficult field for black men to get into? Are they just chomping at the bit to become teachers? And, and so she's saying, we're going to get you the mentorship and the education training you need to become teachers. <laughs> what an odd thing. Teachers, not a high paying job. I mean, God bless teachers. I, my sister's a teacher. Teachers are severely underpaid, in my opinion, and they do a lot of work and it's very stressful. They're basically raising our kids. And uh, whether you like it or not, maybe you don't like that, but nonetheless, it's happening. Uh, but why not like become doctors or become engineers or become, you know, the high paying jobs that actually get you from low middle class or middle class into the upper, upper middle class of society. Then she said, there's another weird one. We're going to protect cryptocurrency, protect cryptocurrency investments. So black men who make them know their money is safe. And this is after, by the way, Democrats in particular have criticized crypto as being the money for criminals. <laughs> so they're saying, oh, you know, well, you got to buy your drugs, right? We're going to legalize weed, but for all the, uh, but, you know, we're going to go ahead and just make sure your crypto is cool and that nobody touches or traces your crypto or whatever. So that, I mean, this just sounds okay. So that you could commit crime because that's what we Democrats keep saying about crypto. Ask Elizabeth Warren, launch a national health initiative focused on the illnesses that disproportionately impact black men. Um, and lastly, legalize recreational marijuana and create opportunities for Black Americans to succeed in this new industry. <laughs> so we're going to legalize it. We're going to let you sell it. And you're going to be able to make your crypto. And then you're probably going to develop a drug habit, right? So that's why we're going to need to get you those initiatives focused on the illnesses that disproportionately impact you. Because we've now said your industry's drugs. And, um, you know, drugs come with consequences, come with health consequences. I mean, this is just so, and then you could become a teacher and you could peddle the drugs to your students and we'll give you the loans to start your business, the 20 grand to start that weed business that we're pushing you into. I mean, this is the most ridiculous 
and racist sounding plan. You know, here they are saying we're not. In fact, it's not you're racist if you vote for Donald Trump. That's what they're trying to tell you. You're racist if you vote for Donald Trump. But Kamala Harris comes out with literally the most recent racist agenda. And it's not only a racist agenda for black men, but why is there only an agenda for black men that's racist against everybody else? To say, well, we're going to do more for black people than we're going to do for anybody else who's struggling in the, in America. Everybody's struggling. Lots of people are struggling. It doesn't matter their color. But now you're going to alienate everybody else in America. And you're just, we're, we give all these big loans, you know, to black entrepreneurs and um, help them get into the weed business. <clears throat> I mean, just, okay, this is a way to win over voters, I suppose. I don't know. Really bizarre. <laughs> How about you just come out with some actual good policy? I mean, hey, props to her for showing some policies. I haven't seen any policies from her campaign at this point. So this is better than nothing, I suppose. We're finally getting some, uh, you know, but this is the type of stuff that's coming out of her brain. And this, this agenda right here leads me to believe she really was the one who thought about this. The thing about Kamala is she hasn't showcased having one iota of a brain at all in any of her interviews anytime she's ever spoken i just don't think the woman is very intelligent and i and it's a shame i don't want her to be the representation of a strong female leader she's clearly not that she's clearly a puppet they like her because they can control her because she doesn't seem to have a mind of her own but i kind of feel like this one she came up with herself <laughs> and they're like all right she said this is what she wants to do let's go ahead and put it out there this is the kamala harris plan for black men <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. This was just a clip from the longer, larger show that you can catch Monday through Friday, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern at KimIversonShow.com. That'll root you to the platform where you need to be in order to get the full uncensored show every Monday through Friday, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern. Click on that link. Watch the full interview. See you there.